first sign of aging for me was uh, losing my hair. I started losing my hair. And, uh, I, we have any bald people in here? One guy with a hat. Two people with hats. That's great. <laughs> I started losing my hair. I went to the doctors to see if there was anything they could do. And the doctor's like, not a lot we could do. But you know that most balding is caused by too much testosterone? I'm like, that sounds made up, right? <laughs> that sounds like it's made up to make bald guys like me feel better. <laughs> like, hey doc, why am I balding? <clears throat> You're too much of a man, that's what it is. <laughs> You're so much of a man, that guy with a full head of hair, he is a total pussy. You, on the other hand. Oh, you're a big, strong man. Yes, you are. <laughs> so strong. Look how strong you are. You're the strongest boy in the world, aren't you? But you can carry all the groceries in one try. <laughs> He's a pediatrician. That's why he talks to me like that. <laughs> Helps me out. Good guy. I, uh... <laughs> I'm a millennial. I, uh, I know I don't look like it. I look like a retired cop, but I am a millennial. <laughs> and uh, I do my best to defend millennials because we always get shit on, you know, like for no reason. And I think it's because people have no idea. <laughs> was that your Coke dealer? What the fuck? What was so important? There is cameras everywhere in here. And you're like, you know what? I think I'm going to have the. Who also has a ringtone still? <laughs> Everyone knows vibrate silence. Don't fuck with anybody, including yourself. And you're over here like, let's just do the remix to a, a Cardi B song as my ringtone. And I'll just have it play during a recording, a live recording of somebody's set. And it will make it completely awkward for everybody in here that paid zero dollars. And nobody in here is here to see me. They're all here to see Jesus, and I know this. <laughs> and for anybody watching this, you think I mean the second coming of Jesus, and I just mean a fat Mexican. <laughs> I just think of God. <laughs> and you ruined that! <laughs> oh, dick. No, I was kidding. Fuck. All right, what was I talking about? Heroin? I don't even know anymore. Um... Let's see, let me get back to my uh, set. Cop. Retired <laughs> cop, thank you. I'm gonna write you a parking ticket later. <laughs> no, I'm a millennial. I do my best to defend millennials because I think we get shit on. I think the main thing is is that people don't know how old millennials are, you know? Like, people think we're like kids. We're like four, damn near fucking 40. Like, I'm almost 40 years old. You know, like, if I went missing when I was a kid, no one would have found me. That's how old I am. And some of you don't understand what I mean, but like nobody cared about kids till like 1999. You don't understand this. Like before, before there was like Amber Alerts and shit. Uh, if you went missing, no one, no one was gonna even search. That's what was gonna happen. This was, they would throw you on the side of a milk carton. That's what would happen. They would throw you on the side of a milk carton. Or what your other hope is, they threw you on a video on MTV by the band Soul Asylum. Those are the only two hopes. There was only like, runaway train never come, and then a picture of a missing child would come up during a grunge song. That was the only hope of that. And I just don't understand, <laughs> like, I don't think people understand, like, here's the thing. So they would throw you on the side of a milk carton, and that milk, would expire about the same time you would have. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, that was too dark? <laughs> I'm telling the truth. If you called the cops, they wouldn't have found you. You know what I mean? They would have just been like, uh, did you throw a sweater that smells uh, like you on the porch? Or maybe throw uh, a Nintendo up there. You'll come back any day now. I, they were still smoking in restaurants when I was a kid. Woo. Why are you wooing that? It's awful. I would go to a restaurant when I was like seven with my mom and my three aunts, and we would sit down. Before we even sit down, we get to the hostess. The hostess would be like, would you guys like smoking or not smoking? Before she could get the nod, my mom would be like, smoking! That's what would happen. So now I'm sitting in a booth, surrounded by my mom and three aunts. And they're just fucking hotboxing me. That's all they're doing. With these fucking misty menthol ultralights. 
an ultralight 100s, and they were longer than the straws that anybody <laughs> would ever need to use for any. They were heaving over the table. You're trying to have breakfast. She's just like, what'd you get in your omelet? I'm like, pan cheese and ash, mom. That's what I got. My dad hates millennials. He's always like, millennials are pussies. Fuck the millennials. Fuck the millennials are a bunch of pussies. His big thing was, they closed down school for four days because of snow. And he's like, see, millennials are a bunch of pussies. When I was a kid, snow was way deeper. It was up to here on me. <laughs> I'm like, because you were a kid. <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> there wasn't more snow. You were a smaller person. <laughs> you were like a six foot fifth grader walking around. Otherwise, you'd be in the NBA and not yelling at your television every day. That's what would happen. I, uh, I have ADHD. Anybody here? Have, you're not paying attention. I don't like this. <laughs> I got diagnosed when I was 38 years old. I remember going to the counselor, and the counselor was like, Wes, you've been diagnosed with ADHD. You need to read this book. <laughs> On ADHD. <laughs> like, you need to fucking read this book on ADHD. <laughs> I have attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And she was trying to make me read 400 pages on it. No, she was cool as shit. She would crush up Adderall pills on every single page. I'd flip it and be like, hell yeah, I want to learn about this. Let's go. It was a great time. People always ask what it's like to have it. And uh, I'll tell you guys what it's like to have it. You guys know about the Edmund Fitzgerald? Yes. <laughs> All right, yes. Yeah, you have to learn it in Michigan. <laughs> they don't teach you anything about history but that shit. That's what they teach you. <laughs> but if you don't know anything about it, I'll tell you a little bit about the Evan Fitzgerald. The Evan Fitzgerald was a uh, shipping freighter that was built in the 1950s, right? Built in the 1950s. Um, it, it's known for a few things. It was, it was kind of called the Titanic of shipping freighters. They had other nicknames like the Pride of the American Side, right? It had over 300 shipments in less than six months, which is still a record to this day. And then in 1974, they actually took the Edmund Fitzgerald out on a shipping voyage despite all warnings from everyone. The captain took the ship out on Lake Superior. There was a gigantic storm going out on Lake Superior at the time. The waves were eight to 10 foot. To, 10 feet high, right? There was winds that were so bad, they were hurricane-like. There was no distress signals ever sent out. Any communication they had with the ship itself was just all bravado. It was all things like, we're gonna make it, we're gonna keep going, and then it sank. And in 1975, a folk singer by the name of Gordon Lightfoot <laughs> wrote a song called The Wreck of the Evan Fitzgerald, and it's to this day the longest reigning number one song in Canada. You're <laughs> <laughs> laughing, but it is, and it got up to number two in America, which is awesome to me. And a lot of people call Gordon Lightfoot the Canadian Bob Dylan. <laughs> they call him, that's his nickname. And that means to me, when Bob Dylan goes to Canada, they call him the American Gordon Lightfoot, <laughs> obviously. They go to concerts, they see Bob Dylan, oh, it's the American Gordon Lightfoot, look at how awesome. I spent all this time wondering in my head, who would be the Canadian Neil Young, right? And then I found out through some search online that Neil Young is actually fucking from Canada. I thought he was from America this whole time. But no, he's from Canada which is crazy to me. I actually thought Van Morrison was the American Neil Young. You know where he's from? Ireland. Didn't even know it. <laughs> the Irish Neil Young is actually just the Canadian Van Morrison. That's all he is. And at one point, and this is a true story, the Canadian Bob Dylan 
went out on tour with the American Gordon Lightfoot and the Irish friend Morrison. And their backing band was just a band called The Band. Which to me is the cockiest fucking shit of all time. Right? Yeah, they have some good music, but when they came up with their name, they're just like, yeah, we're the band. We're the band. We're not anything. We're not the Beatles. We're the fucking band. Now, if any of you are wondering what I'm talking about right now, <laughs> that is what it's like to have ADHD. <laughs> Thank you guys very much.